Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of the soulful war with Russia and in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background and today I want to speak about one concept, one idea that is very often repeated in the news and a popular comment among Russian trolls these are Russian referendums in Ukraine that were held or are planned to be held in uh, various so-called republics like DNR, LNR. Now they want to organize something similar in uh, Kherson region, in Donetsk region and so on. Many uh, Russian trolls or people who were poisoned by Russian propaganda believe that these referendums demonstrate the free will of Ukrainian people to become either a part of Russia or a part of uh, these independent so-called uh, republics. But I have to explain that nobody inside Ukraine and even no sane person inside this occupied poor republics believe in uh, the fact that these uh, referendums, these votings are legitimate. Let's look at the first mistake that was made, uh, at the first mistake that was accepted by the world, and that is the annexation of the Crimea. Uh, trying to keep a pro-Russian figure, Russia-funded President Yanukovych, trying to change the pro-European movement of Ukraine to the European Union, to NATO, in uh, 2014, uh, Yanukovych in 2013 actually Yanukovych decided we will turn back to Russia and we will stop the Euro integration processes. All Ukrainians were against that and we have very active civil society and that was the reason for Maidan when Yanukovych first ordered to shoot people and many civilians were killed. This is a first really tragic event in the modern history of Ukraine but also a very heroic one. So when Yanukovych fled for Russia, of course, uh, we had a very difficult period. We were preparing for the elections and using this time, not believing that Ukraine can be independent and European, uh, Russia decided to attack for the first time openly. And it all began with green uh, people, green men appearing in Crimea. They were not wearing any military uh, symbols that could identify them with a particular army, but it goes without saying that these were Russians, they were use, using Russian weapons, they are identified people who are various officers, commanders of uh, Russian army, experienced people who also participated in other military campaigns of Russia in different corners of the world, and they started the annexation of Crimea. Then the referendum that was held there is total bullshit because it was not organized according to any rules. Uh, it was just one question and people were surrounded by the military with, you know, machine guns and all of that. And I don't think this is a typical image of a referendum that you have in your head. So uh, this was a choice without a choice. And uh, I have to stress it here that this is a very typical behavior for Russia, because in Russia, you know, all the presidents, all the parties they always win with the really huge numbers like uh, 92 percent or something and for the last 22 years they have Putin as their ruler their Führer and it's totally okay for them so Russians who organize this referendums they know nothing about voting democracy referendums and they maybe even some citizens believe it is totally okay i think that this diagnosis goes back and dates back to the times of uh, communism and soviet union when we had like only one party and uh, like that's the choice that you have uh, to make no other uh, options. So people feel really happy in Russia not to have a choice and uh, like freedom is treated as uh, a problem. And uh, in Ukraine it is just the country and I don't know why is it so because we live together very close to each other for hundreds of years and Ukrainians are always free spirit people and Russians always want Tsar so different it's dna or something i don't know how to explain it because it's uh, 
this difference continues from generation to generation despite uh, communism, despite occupation, despite various military <coughs> operations and things like that. So this referendum in Crimea was just one question with military people all around, with uh, the annexation and presence of uh, various military groups on the territory of the peninsula definitely was uh, totally fake and its decisions, they are worth nothing. Once again, uh, what were the reasons for this referendum? Was it agreed with any kind of um, supranational organization? I don't know who are responsible for that. Like you can come to France, for example, I can come to France and organize uh, a referendum in uh, this in one district in Paris. No. Will someone believe this kind of referendum if I organize it? No, because who am I? So who are these people? Who are these green men? And why Putin decided it's time to organize referendum in Crimea with just one question and military soldiers all around? I have no answer. I have a question. Why so many people close their eyes, so many global leaders close their eyes and honestly you may not like it, but in Ukraine, many people blame Obama, a Nobel Prize winner who also encouraged Ukrainian government not to protest and to try and negotiate with Russia. The results of these negotiations are the annexation and occupation of some parts of Luhansk and Donetsk regions with also fake referendums uh, organized just in a similar way. And uh, of course, once again, one of the reasons why Ruski Mir is so unpopular now in Ukraine that many people who were pro-Russian before 2014, after the annexation, after the occupation, saw life in those so-called republics and uh, they saw how poor people are, no investments, no real governments, like just Google their television or something. It looks like, I don't know, worse than Northern Korea. And uh, so many people who were like pro-Russian switched to being normal after that. And now they want to repeat this kind of referendums in Kherson or in Donetsk and Luhansk regions, larger uh, zones. And of course, these are not real referendums. Nobody wants them. They threaten people that if they don't come, they will be evacuated, deported actually to Russia. So they give motivation, you know, to vote for this fake republic. So far, they still have doubts whether they want to uh, pronounce them independent or to make them join Russia. Uh, I personally think that uh, they might want them to join Russia because they feel that this independent republics are not like uh, capable of living or creating any kind of positive image. So they will perhaps try to imitate and manipulate the opinion that people of uh, Kherson uh, want to be a part of Auckland. Definitely it is not that way. And uh, that might be um, a serious uh, problem for them because people, civilians and soldiers protest and I'm sure we will get Kherson back quickly. So today's vlog I wanted to dedicate to this fact. So those of you who are have this uh, discussions with other people, either poisoned by propaganda or less attentive, who say that referendums are an argument and people in these regions want to be with Russia, please let them know these are not real referendums. This is not something you hold in the Netherlands or in the UK. Even these kinds of referendums can be influenced by Russia, can be manipulated, but not to that extent. Because here we don't have normal questions. Here we have military people standing behind the backs of the voters. And we always have results before the start of the referendum. For example, now they say that more than 70% of uh, people in Donetsk region will vote for joining Russia or something. So the results are already known even before the start, even before the date of the referendum. So it is extremely important to know these are not real votings. These are not real wills of people who live on these occupied territories who are waiting for the Ukrainian armed forces to free them. And let it be that uh, way. Thank you very much for watching my vlogs and your subscriptions. They mean a lot as they help me grow the channel and uh, inform more people about the situation in Ukraine. And it's really important as this war continues and we don't have to get used to that. Also today I will leave a link to one video of our interview project where we speak with an officer from uh, the Ukrainian 
a police who shares his experience in Bucha, Irpin and the emotions he felt there. Once again, this interview is with English subtitles, so you can learn more about this real life experience here in Ukraine. Thank you for buying me coffees, for becoming my patrons and most importantly, for caring about Ukraine and Ukrainian people. Slava Ukraini!